just received a briefing from uh, FBI Director Comey as well as my White House team uh, about the tragic shooting that took place in Chattanooga today. Uh, we don't know yet all the details. We know that uh, what appears to be a lone gunman carried out these attacks. Uh, we've identified a name. And at this point, a full investigation is taking place. The FBI will be in the lead, uh, working closely with local law enforcement. That is pathetic. Welcome to the Steve Malzberg Show Friday edition, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in just a moment, we'll be joined by the Malzberg panel, David Swerdlick and Larry Elder. And we're going to discuss, among other things, President Obama's pathetic, listless, lifeless, passionless reaction to the death of four American Marines on our own soil. Um, what, 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 what could I say? First of all, I could tell you that today, the uh, chairman of the Homeland Security Committee in the House, uh, Mike McCall, uh, said that he believes this attack was ISIS-inspired. Okay? Yet the media still says, why did he do this? Uh, and the president said yesterday, by the way, he's the president. He said he had a name, so he knew it was a Muslim. He knew the Muslim name. He knew what it sounded like, what it looked like. He must have known more than we knew at that point if he was briefed as president. He must have known about the alleged uh, postings saying serve Allah, etc. Yet he called it a lone gunman. A lone gunman. Never used the word terrorism, never used the word Islam, never used the word Muslim, because the president is as phony as a $3 bill. It, compare this to his reaction in the aftermath of the church shooting, or to the Michael Brown shooting, or to the Trayvon Martin case, or to uh, 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 Gates, the Gates uh, incident in Cambridge where the cops acted stupidly. There's only two things that rouse this man's passion. That's the death of a Muslim or the death of a black criminal. Otherwise, hatcheted, hatcheted up rabbis in a Jerusalem synagogue, four dead Marines. Remember Fort Hood? Remember how he reacted to Fort Hood? He came out, he had an event with American, Na Native Americans. And he said, oh, let me give a shout out to, let me give a shout out to Chief blah, 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 blah. And then finally, after two minutes, he got around to, I had a very bad incident happen today. Are you kidding me? That was Fort Hood. He's not moved, he doesn't care. Not moved and doesn't care. I'd love for him to prove me wrong. A lone gun engine is shooting. We have a name. You have a name? Oh, that's great. All right, folks. Um, we're joined by uh, the Malzberg panel. Uh, joining us now is David Swerdlick, uh, assistant editor at uh, Post Everything at the Washington Post. That's WashingtonPost.com. And Larry Elder, radio host of The Larry Elder Show, author of Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. Check him out at LarryElder.com. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Okay, let me start with you, Larry. Uh, the president's uh, description yesterday of the shooting, his reaction. You know, you know what I hearken back to? I hearken back to kind of, well, let me get your, your answer first. Well, he gave a very uh, almost emotionless response, didn't he? Uh, contrast that with what he said about Trayvon Martin. Contrast that with what he said about Michael Brown and Ferguson. And this is a lone gunman. He didn't at all link it to uh, Islamofascism, didn't at all talk about Islamic extremism. Uh, ironically, my parents met Steve in Chattanooga, and my dad was a Marine. So this uh, hits close to me, and I just wish he had given a little more emotion to give us the impression that he really cares and understands what's going on here. David, I will insist that the only thing that moves him are the deaths of death of a Muslim and the death of a, of a criminal those are the only a black criminal those are the only things that he has shown emotion over dead rabbis being hatcheted to death in a Jerusalem synagogue a shrug let yesterday a shrug and and the dishonest shrug at that with no mention of terror no mention of anything Steve, first of all, yesterday, uh, he didn't say anything in that clip, at least, that you played that was factually inaccurate, right? He said that uh, we don't know all the facts yet, which we don't, and he said that it appeared to be a lone gunman. He didn't draw any firm conclusions, but beyond that, he also called for the prayers to go out to the Marines and their families, and clearly for everyone in the country, and I think also the president, I don't see how anyone could see it otherwise, that uh, he, he, his heart goes out 
to those men in uniform who were, who were killed. But what I hearken back to is like a year ago when Prime Minister David Cameron in the United Kingdom called out Islamic terror on the floor of the House of Commons, and lots of conservatives said, oh, this is how a head of state should speak, this is what a head of state should do, except that, meanwhile, he's talking, he's not dropping any bombs on ISIS. President Obama, maybe he doesn't talk as tough as you'd like him to talk. He's the only world leader who, on a week-in, week-out basis, is flying, uh, you know, military sorties and dropping bombs on ISIS in Iraq and Syria. Larry, so, so Steve, President Obama's beating ISIS, really? I didn't so say Steve, he was we should, beating we should, ISIS. I said he so was Steve, the only I, one fighting them. So, Steve, I guess we should be grateful he didn't call it work, workplace uh, 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 accident. And I guess we ought to be grateful he didn't bring up gun control, I suppose. Well, that, you, you got you to be thankful for small miracles. Yeah. We, now, but here's, what I, here, here's something else that took place. And to me, this is just another reflection of the president. Uh, let's put up this video. I don't know if you saw it today uh, at the press briefing. Josh Ernest. Um, decided he was going to unveil these two new monitors. So he had one monitor on either side of him. Can we put that up? One monitor on either side of him. There it is. And he, he, was, he was putting up uh, names of newspapers with a quote from their editorials praising the Iran deal. This is what he did the day after four Marines are slaughtered in cold blood. This is how he starts his press conference. And what I hearken back to, uh, uh, David, is how Barack Obama at, during Fort Hood, after it, the shootings had taken place, he kept his schedule. He went to an, a Native American event and he took two and a half minutes to go, hey everybody, giving shout outs, literally shout outs, before he got around to acknowledging what happened at Fort Hood. Today was a disgrace at that press briefing. Well, Steve, look, I, I do think that the press briefing today was the wrong time, the day after four Marines were killed, to roll out some new feature. I, I'm not going to defend that. Look, they have had many instances where optics in that press briefing room have been bad. I think you're right that this is one today. But I, again, I do think that you and Larry are off base in criticizing the president and saying that he doesn't care. Again, yesterday I heard him call for people to pray for the Marines and their families. And again, look, the president is the president of everybody. He's try he, 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 he is addressing the, the, the tragedy. And then he also is in the midst of this Iran negotiation. I mean, that, that is the challenge of the presidency, right? Well, Larry, the Iran negotiation had already ended. And uh, what about the fact that, at least as of yesterday, the Obama administration, the Obama, President Obama, had not said one word about the death of Kate Steinle, the woman that was murdered by an illegal alien in the Bay Area. He picks and chooses. If I had a son, he would look like Trayvon, gives a speech at the United Nations and mentions Ferguson, and it turns out Michael, Michael Brown was shot legitimately. He picks and chooses, and this is another incident where he showed tone deafness. David, how does he send nobody to, to show he doesn't care? Nobody to the funerals of the two cops assassinated in Brooklyn. Nobody to the funeral of, uh, of, of the, 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 uh, the, the girl in, uh, in San Francisco who was gunned down by the illegal. Not only that, he never mentioned her. Nobody official on duty to uh, Margaret Thatcher, but of course to Michael Brown, uh, to the funeral of other criminals, who, uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, to Hugo Chavez. I mean, Freddie it's Green. obvious by Steve. what he does, what he does care about, David. Steve, Steve two, let me make two quick points. One is, is that although I can't recite off the top of my head every administration official who's gone to police funerals, I do believe that Vice President Biden has gone to at least one of these more recent, uh, clearly tragic police funerals. If it wasn't the New York, the two Brooklyn cops, then Maybe it was I, 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 I might funeral. be mistaken. It wasn't the two Brooklyn cops. There was another police officer assassinated not too long ago. He died of his wound, shot in the face about a month ago. Okay. Nobody went to that funeral. Okay, and, I, and I, I agree with you that someone from the administration, from the Justice Department, should try to attend these funerals. I'm not, I'm not pushing back. They go to Michael Brown. Three of them go to Michael Brown. But, 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 to but Michael you, Brown. Wait, a, wait a second. I want to go to Larry's point about Michael Brown. President Obama never publicly said that he had reached a conclusion or a judgment one way or the other about the Michael Brown situation. All he said was, we're looking into it and we're investigating, and he put the Justice Department on it. He never And then he sent three that. representatives to the thugs' funeral. We're and coming more back, folks. More, more, the, more on the Molesburg panel. Don't go away. I'm, uh, I have a lot of emotions about what happened yesterday. 
This is the event we've been most worried about. And then it happened. I don't know how many more of these could happen, but I can tell you there are ISIS investigations in all 50 states across the United States of America. They are permeating our society and this country through the internet and through social media. It's very, very difficult to stop it. And I believe uh, yesterday, unfortunately, we couldn't. Okay, uh, he called it an ISIS-inspired attack. That's the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. The FBI uh, today did not agree with that assessment and uh, said the investigation is going forward as if it were a terrorist attack uh, until proven otherwise. Rejoining the Mulsberg panel, David Swerdlick, Larry Elder. Hey, David, what's coming up on the uh, Post Everything at the Washington Post this weekend? So we're, we're fronting the uh, Sunday Outlook section with a story about Bernie Sanders. And uh, the, the take is basically, look, he's not going to be a President Barack Obama 2000, circa 2008. That that was a once-in-a-lifetime situation where the upstart candidate beat the favorite, Hillary Clinton. And that this time, although Bernie Sanders is getting traction, he probably won't ultimately prevail. All right. He's also not black, so uh, that might make a difference as well. Uh, oh, you're going to just drop that in there? I, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but as, as a white guy, I uh, kind of notice he's not black. Well, he's, right. also, he's also a progressive, and President Obama is not a progressive. All right. All right so let's of course start. he is. You don't uh, think President Obama? Well, what is President Obama, David? President Obama is a middle of the rotor. There's nothing oh, that President goodness. Obama has done that either President Ford, President... Eisenhower, President Nixon wouldn't have done. There's not. You can't name one o thing. Obama, Obamacare? President, President Nixon did the employer mandate. Obamacare? Did he, did he, did he President impose, Eisenhower did did the he impose a top-down universal health care coverage? No, he did not. Obamacare a trillion dollars, Obama trillion dollars stimulus. Is Omnicare is mass care, right? Trillion dollar right? stimulus, 150 billion dollars on the, windmills the, the, and and green jobs. No, they Larry, wouldn't have done Larry, that. Larry, Larry, the stimulus worked. Most studies. No, it did. No, it did not. Most no, it did not. The Dow Jones is up 10,000 points since Obama's first fiscal. They had nothing to do with the stimulus. Had everything to do the, with what the Federal the Reserve is doing. The unemployment rate is in half since Obama's first and the, fiscal. And the and the oh, and the really? poverty rate is up. And the uh, uh, people yes, who are not looking for we work borrowed. and are out of the workforce yes, participation absolutely. is up. The, the debt is up. Money was borrowed to prevent a depression. So no wait a minute. So you, wait, so you mean all Hillary has to do is say, I love Obama's economic policies and I'll run yeah. on him again? No, I'm not predicting the future about who's going to win this election. No, no, I'm going to ask you about I'm, 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 I'm who's going to win. We'll, 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 we'll run. Will wait, wait, run. Wait, 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 one at a time. Larry, go ahead. Will Hillary run on Obama's economic agenda with Steve's question? I, I, I don't know. I think she's trying to... <laughs> no, 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 listen. No, wait, wait, no, wait. What? Larry, you're like, ha, huh, I'm not defending Hillary Clinton. I'm no, you're defending I'm, Obama. I'm telling you that Hillary Clinton, I think, is walking a tightrope between trying to keep the Obama coalition together and at the same time trying not to get outflanked on her left by someone like Bernie Sanders. Having said that, my proposition is, and I'm pretty solid on this, President Obama is not a progressive. He's down the middle. He, oh you you can call him a big government conservative. Have you seen his record as a senator and you've seen Hillary's record as a senator? I'm, they were both I'm, liberal. I'm, I'm, she was even more liberal president. than he is. Compare right. presidents to presidents. David, David, I got to say, yeah. there's never been a president who, I, I believe, who doesn't love this country to death and I don't think this president does. There's never been a president who despises our history, and I believe this president does. There's never been a president with a chip on his shoulder the size of a, a bigger than his head, and this president has one. And on his way out the door, this president's going to pardon every low-level, quote-unquote, drug offender and let us suffer the consequences. And you say he's like every other president? Steve, you're, 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 you're just wrong about President Obama. Look. Has the president made mistakes? Yes. Does he have personal flaws? Yes. Is he the greatest politician of all time? No. But is the country better off now than we were in the end of 2008 when Lehman Brothers was collapsing, AIG was collapsing, the stock market was in free fall, uh, unemployment was going up? Yes, we are better it's off. It's in now. spite of him, Larry, not because of him. Absolutely it's not, in, spite it's not of him. in spite of him. He has made measured decisions, not he, all of them right. And by the way, I, just for the record, I'm not suggesting that Obamacare was some great legislative tour de force. I'm okay, simply I'm suggesting I'm, to let, you that it's not inconsistent can I, can I please with what say other something? moderate you. Democrat and Republican presidents would have let, done. Let Larry go. The most loyal constituents were blacks. 95% of blacks voted for him. African Americans always vote for Democrats. Wait, let Larry finish. David, let Larry finish. 
Black poverty is up under Obama. The black net worth is down under Obama. The wealth gap between blacks and whites is the widest it's been in 25 years. The labor force participation rate, the percentage of blacks who are working or looking for work, is the lowest it's been since 1977 because so many people said to hell with it. And you're bragging about what a great job Obama did? Are you smoking something? The labor force participation rate is at the highest it's been across the board. That's because we were coming out. You mean the lowest? Of, we were the lowest. Coming, excuse me, at the lowest. I, I, thank you. We were coming out of a recession when Obama took office. Look, no, it's because people have given up. They've quit looking. They've given up. They've quit looking, especially black people. Larry, the, the, yes. the, 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 the premise, of what, you're, the premise of what you're driving at is flawed because African Americans at a rate of 90% voted for Al Gore, voted for John Kerry, will vote for Hillary Clinton. African Americans in the last three, four, five decades overwhelmingly vote for Democrats right, and only Barack Larry, Obama. Larry, final word, right Larry, final word. Final Obama, word Larry. Got a higher, Obama got a higher percentage of the black vote than John Kerry did and look at what Obama has done. He has hit the black middle class with everything but a baseball bat. And here you are bragging about what a great job he's right. done. I can't believe Guys, it. Guys, have a great weekend, great debate. Negba Abedini, wife of Pastor Saeed Abedini is next. Uh, so uh, don't go away, I wanna thank uh, the panel. It was a great, great panel debate, ladies and gentlemen. And, and Neg Abedini is uh, a very important guest at this time because, of course, uh, the question from Major Garrett and her husband is still being held in an Iranian prison where he's regularly beaten. So uh, we'll get her input, see how she feels about the Iran deal and more as uh, the Steve Malsberg Show continues.